On February the 22nd this year, Intuitive Machines landed the Odysseus spacecraft onto the south polar region of the Moon. I was expecting the Flat Earthers to come out in force and criticise this mission, but they've been relatively quiet on the matter. But one man was positively seething. Yep, you guessed it, our favourite Flat Earther, CC Chris from New York, Westchester County, and he is not happy. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a big thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Boot.dev. Boot.dev is building the smartest way to master back-end development by tackling the hardest problem with e-learning, boredom. The folks at Boot.dev believe the smartest way to learn code is to make sure you're never bored. Boot.dev is online, self-paced, and feels like a captivating RPG game. You will learn back-end web development from start to finish in the Python and Go programming languages. And it's designed to get you writing a ton of code, because getting your hands on the keyboard and shipping projects is the only way to learn. You will earn XP, levels, achievements, and complete quests to get top spots on global leaderboards. And the great thing at Boot.dev is, if you ever struggle to understand any of the concepts, Boots, a powerful bear wizard that's been trained on every lesson, can walk you through your issues. He is an AI that will ask you questions to help you understand, rather than just hand you the answers. And on top of that, the Boot.dev Discord community is very active, and they're there to help if you ever get stuck on any coding challenges. They never want a student feeling like they've spent money on something that isn't helping. So they offer a 30-day no-questions-asked refund policy, and a free demo of every course and its interactive features. Click the link in the description box and use my code SIMANDAN to get 25% off your first payment towards boot.dev. That's 25% off your first month or your first year, depending on which subscription you use. Right, back to today's video and CC Chris from Westchester County, New York. He's in his kitchen, as usual, and he has a bee in his bonnet about this Odysseus mission to the moon. Get ready for this one, everyone. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Uh, good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. It's um, 2.28. AM? I've never seen your hair that out of control, buddy. Hope you're okay. 24. Uh, it's a leap year this year. But I don't want to talk about that right now. That's how I like to screw everybody up. As usual, the Flat Earther doesn't want to talk about leap years. No surprise there. I want to talk about this amazing technology that we have in 2024 by landing an unmanned spacecraft up on the moon. <laughs> I mean, look at the beautiful pictures that we have and, and how they just continue this lie. Uh, and remember, I want you to remember, they bring in $60 million a day. Yes, NASA does, but Odysseus was a private mission. There were six NASA science instruments on board, yes, and it was launched by SpaceX. But the lander itself, as I stated, was made by intuitive machines. So the $60 million a day comment there doesn't really mean anything. What would you do with $60 million a day? Send all you flat earthers to space so you can actually see the Earth with your own eyes. What would you do? Well, let me show you what they do. This is what they give you. Pretty fascinating images for you uh, that I can talk through now if you look up at the teleprompter. I'm not, I forget what this guy's name is. Uh, hold on. This is, um, this is a picture of Odie on the surface of the moon. That is down. beautiful. Look at that. that would, that's the engine firing right the there. Do you see that? You can see that, right? Yeah, a fantastic image, Chris. What's wrong with it? There on the left of the yeah. image, the landing gear did what it was supposed and to do and protect the There it is. As it but you see how the fisheye lens just bends the entire the thing, but they need that fisheye lens, right? Service, service yes, they do. <laughs> they of course they do. Well, yes, in order to catch as much information as possible, the widest field of view possible is used. And a fisheye lens does that quite nicely. Unmanned ship, by the way. There's scientific information. What are these things? 
what that you looks like bamboo sticks sprayed over with uh, spray paint of silver. Oh, so softly on the moon. I don't think it's hard to understand that those are the legs of the lander, Chris. Hmm. Now remember, where is the NASA logo? Is it right there? There it is. Is that the NASA logo? It's got to be right there or somewhere up here. It's the one on the right, Chris. Just here. I've used the actual photo rather than the image on his phone. Because there's not a space agency that's out there that's not owned by NASA. There are over 70 different space agencies not owned by NASA, Chris. Over 70. They're not going to let you go anywhere. Just like you can't go down to Antarctica. Did he say it's very flat? I'm not really sure. I heard something on that. And the Apollo program. And it was a certified piece of flight hardware. Now remember, um, every time you see the moon American when it's full, put it on, do you um, see this dusty ash cloud at all? No, really I mean, um, ground at all? No, it's as bright as the sun's. Yes, the sun's light does reflect off the moon, but if you use a powerful enough telescope, you can definitely see that that is how the ground looks. What is the, this? Uh, kind of view that's of what you all get. The data that's within the that's what you get. Yes, that's the consequence of using a lens with an almost 180 degree field of view. We've already mentioned this. You do see more stuff, but that stuff is often distorted. Happens with the 360 cameras all the time. And if you bothered to do just a little bit or teeny research on that, then you would have known. Um, all the data 60 million dollars uh, a day. You keep saying that, but it means nothing. NASA put $118 million into that lander. An intuitive machine spent $130 million. But that's a steal for NASA, because usually it would cost them between half a billion and a billion dollars to build their own lander. And that is not the only thing that NASA have got going on. Artemis, for example, will cost NASA $93 billion up to 2025. Wow. Here oh, here we are. Now here we are. Now, now, I, this is what I wanted to talk about. Do you see this? You see the, the gold foil blanket is the helium tank. The gold foil blanket. Uh, so the radiation the belt, there's is no so worries about the radiation belt at all whatsoever. Normally, you moan that people can't get through the radiation belts. Yet now an unmanned craft is doing it and you're still moaning. However, I still want to talk about this ground right here. Okay, this is the last picture that was taken before it tipped over and it's now on a rock. It's perfect. Okay, I don't remember the, 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 the gold foil because that really does serve a lot of purpose when you're going through the radiation belt, which apparently is, Van Allen said, completely poisonous. You can't get through it, but you can go back and forth, back and forth, no problem at all. That is total nonsense. Van Allen himself said that it would be possible to get through the weaker sections of the radiation belts. Ah, oh, yeah, see? That's great, guys. That's just great. You're done. I'm sorry. You will never, ever, ever see anybody on the moon except nonsense like this. This sort of comment makes me even more excited for Artemis. And that's my case in point to you. Okay. I was, uh, I wore my shirt. I'm doing laundry right now, so I had nothing else to wear. Um, wearing my guitar shirt from New York City. All right, Chris, we don't need your life story. Just wake up, okay? Everything you've been told is a lie. All of this stuff that's going off in the media, it's the same thing back in the 80s, same thing back in the 70s, same thing back in the 60s, same thing. They just keep the lies going all the time. And they do this to keep the population divided. But why? Divided for what reason? And you can't control that divide. You don't know where the line's gonna land. There is never a proper reason for any of this from the Flat Earthers and trained. What else would you do? What would you do if you finally put something up there at some point when you had enough technology to go all the way up there and you have the skies to yourself 
and you saw that the earth is flat and there's a dome up there and there's a god, there's a creator what would you do? you would do this keep lies going for decades no, you would document what you saw and then change your opinion that is how science works there is no benefit to lie and say that the earth is spherical if it isn't generations write books about it teach children in class about it okay I mean this is so bad it's beyond beyond remember that show beyond belief that people can't even they probably didn't even know this thing launched off most people okay why would they <laughs> why would they why would they you're probably right here Chris most people probably don't know about Odysseus but you can be damn sure they'll know about Artemis. And when it touches down and those astronauts walk out onto the surface of the moon for the first time in over 50 years, I will be here to collect the flurf tears and document the absolute meltdowns that will ensue because of it. Us flat earthers now. Fine, look. All right, look. I thank you for stopping. I think a few of my videos will be a part of your life. And we thank you too, Chris. I'm not sure for what yet, but I'll think of something. But for now, we're all done and debunked for another Flat Earth Friday. How do you think Chris will take the new moon landing missions? Lying down, or will he come out fighting? I guess we'll have to find out, won't we? Thanks so much for watching. It truly is appreciated, as always. If you enjoyed it, then please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. Just enough time to once again, thanks boot.dev for sponsoring today's video. Just click the link in the description. Use my code SIMANDAN and you'll get 25% off your first purchase. That's 25% off your first year or your first month, depending on which subscription you choose. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all tomorrow for the next Saturday session. See you then.